Hey everyone, it's Nicole from Nicole Loves Nails and Stormy. Welcome to our channel. So keep me in your side, cause I can do this all night. So today's video is for a new release from Zoya. I have their Toasty collection, which is their transitional. Okay, you really want to leave, huh? I did purchase these polishes. If you would like to pick these polishes up at a discount outside of one of Zoya's many different sale periods, these polishes are also available on the Beyond Polish website, which I have linked down below. If you use my affiliate code, Nicole Loves Nails, you can save an extra 10%. The polishes priced on Beyond Polish are $7.50, which is significantly less than on the Zoya website, just FYI. So if you are new to Zoya, Zoya is a mainstream brand based in the US. Their polishes are in 15 ml bottles. They are 10 free, cruelty free, as well as being vegan friendly. I swatched all these polishes with the Zoya Z Wide brush. I do not like their normal brush. It's, it's too thin for me. So before we get into today's video, I have a couple of things to mention. If you are new around here, hi, I am Nicole. It is wonderful to meet you. And thank you very much for clicking on today's video. Do consider hitting subscribe if you enjoy nail polish related content. I upload new videos every single week featuring a mixture of indie, mainstream, as well as boutique nail polish brands. I also go live every Sunday. If you are in fact a returning subscriber, welcome back. How are you doing? Just how's everyone's week going? I don't know when this video is going up and I just got like a shipping notification for another Zoya collection. So we're going to have a couple of Zoya videos this month. Just, just a heads up. As always down in the description box, I will have links to where you can purchase these polishes, links to the brand social media pages, my social media pages, as well as a link to my blog post on nicolelovesnails.com where I host all of my swatch photos and provide a written review. Also down in the description box, I will have timestamps. Also, one more thing, I am trying to get back into the habit of doing comparisons more often, so I'm trying out a new format for comparisons. Please let me know what you all think. If you'd like me to keep doing comparisons, just, you know, let me know. Okay, let's get into the video now. First up, we have Abigail, which Zoya describes as a medium elephant gray with cool undertones. Abigail had a fantastic formula. This was one of the colors that I had a strong feeling that I was going to really enjoy this one. I would say that this is definitely the color I think of when I think like elephant. It was a little bit on the thinner side, but not so thin that it was watery or difficult to work with. Just be mindful not to go in for too thick of a coat or you will flood. Swatch this one in two coats. I don't really see anyone really needing a third coat unless you have like redonkulously long nails. Blush does dry down fairly glossy on its own, but of course my swatches do include top coat. I had just finished swatching the China Glaze Eco Glaze line when I swatched this polish and and I thought for sure that this was going to be a dead ringer for the polish called Under the Palms. They are not exact dupes. However, I did find in my TV room lighting, they looked exactly the same. However, Abigail has a much better formula than Under the Palms. And now we have Crystal, which Zoya describes, and I quote, a grayed muted gray mulberry with warm undertones. That's a lot of gray. Uh, this one also had a great formula, slightly on the thinner side, but not at all like watery, just, you know, a thinner consistency. If you go in for very thick coats, it will definitely like flood them cuticle crevices. This is the second polish that I definitely thought I was going to like, and I was definitely correct in that. Part of me feels like it's a little boring. It's a little muted. It's definitely one of those like palette cleanser shades, if you will, but I really liked it anyway. It's, it's a little boring, but you know, that's okay. I really, really like this one. I will say this is a very, very, very grayed out purple with like a hint of taupiness to it. I feel that because my own undertones pull very warm that the warmth in my skin definitely made this one lean a bit more um, taupey than it does appear in the bottle. And for comparisons, I pulled out some of the recent grayed out lavender slash purple shades that I've done recently. These were the most similar ones that I could find in my collection. And now we have Elowin, which Zoya describes as a spicy, rich cabaret. Elowin had a fantastic formula. I was pleasantly surprised at how opaque this one was on the first coat. It was not quite a one coater, but it was very close. I do think with a couple of uses, this one will likely be a one coater. This one applied buttery smooth and just had a fantastic application process. This is not a color that I would personally pick out for myself, but I was really surprised at how much I liked how it looked on my nails. I don't know. This is not a color that I thought I would like, but it looked really great on me if I do say so myself. I swatched this one in two coats plus glossy top coat. All the polishes in this release were actually two coaters on me. I did not personally experience any staining. I had a serious case of deja vu when I was swatching this one. I thought this was going to be a dead ringer for Dagmar, but as you can see in the comparison, they they are not dupes. They're similar, but they are not dupes. And now we have Hattie. Zoe describes this one as a rosy Tuscan pink. Hattie had a fantastic formula. It felt slightly, and I mean the slightest of the slightlies, 
chalky just a little bit but it applied very evenly and easily self-leveled like a dream but I don't know, just felt there was just like a hint of chalkiness to the application. This polish and the next one were the two colors in this release that I knew for sure were not going to be for me. I am just not really a fan of pinks in like this shade range, I guess we can call it. Zoya did describe the color perfectly though. I do feel like this is a very natural shade of pink, which you know, not for me. I swatched this one in two coats plus glossy top coat, super easy removal, no problems with staining. This next polish is called Ray, which Zoya is describing as a dusty rose suede with subtle warm and tan undertones. The biggest color differences between Ray and Maddie is I would say that this one has a slight tannish tinge that Maddie did not have, and this one is just slightly lighter as well. Basically, everything that I don't like, and color wise at least, is inside of this polish. So, yeah, this one was definitely not for me. Do I think it was questionable to have these two polishes in the same release? Yes, I do. But if you look at it in a way that most people don't buy full collections anyway, it's not that questionable. I swatched this one in two coats plus a glossy top coat. I pulled out all of the taupey pinky shades that I personally had in my collection and I was really surprised I didn't have an exact dupe. The closest I had was Orly's Parks and Parasols. Speaking of polishes that I thought for sure that I had a dupe, the last polish in this release is called Aura. Zoya describes this one as a dark chocolate tinged blackberry. So this one also had a fantastic formula. It had the perfect Zoya creme formula that I personally really love. Great self-leveling. With thin coats, you will definitely need two coats. If you go in for a thicker first coat, this is going to be a solid one coater. I had two nails that this was opaque on me in just one coat. Color wise, I did not see a single droplet of chocolate or brown in this polish. Like this was all like a super dark purpley shade. I'm actually a little disappointed that I didn't see any brown in this one because the description makes it sound really pretty. The color itself is not bad at all. It's just too dark for me to actually like it. And I thought for sure that this was going to be an exact dupe for Zoya's Constance from one of the fall collections. It wasn't, they were not even remotely all that similar. Okay, so final thoughts. If you see me looking this way, I'm, I'm looking at my collage of the polishes. So yeah, I knew when I bought this collection that this was likely not gonna be the collection for me. With the exception of the more gray tone polishes, I don't feel like any of these colors are really the colors that I would choose for myself. But overall, none of the formulas were bad on any of these, so like I did not have any application issues. I just, the color story is not for me. Hate it. I think it's a little, a little boring to be honest, but I also know that I lean heavily towards bright, fun colors. Again, with the exception of like the gray toned ones, none of these are like, are Nicole colors. If I was going to pick a top pick, I think I would go with either Abigail or Crystal. Just, I like gray tones. I like the grays. So I'd love to know what everyone else saw this release. Like, are you planning on picking up? Have you already picked it up? What'd you think? I'd love to hear from you all. Thank you all very much for watching today's video. Before we leave, I want to give a very special shout out to my channel members. Besties, just thank you all so very much for all your love and support. You guys are the best. Your names are all on the screen right now. If you would like to join my channel memberships, I have a link for that in the description box. But if not, that's fine too. Don't feel pressured. Just hit subscribe, like the video, comment, share all of the things, and we are solid. Thank you all so very much for watching today's video. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.